Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack Intern. I hope that you're doing well. I'm going to be doing the Root and Toot and June on the Range tag, which was originally created by Steve Donahue, sort of for this month's June on the Range reading event uh, here on BookTube. But I was uh, also tagged by Duncan McCurdy, so I will link both of those, those videos in the description box below. And let's saddle up for this cattle drive. Prompt one. A ways out west. Have you ever been to the American West? Well, yes, I was born here. I've lived my entire life here. I went to college here. Uh, and so I have spent quite a bit of time out here in the American West. My house is located near where the uh, Hohokam, the uh, First Nations Hohokam, had a large complex where they had dug um, their irrigation canals. And so a good portion of Phoenix, uh, you know, used those old irrigation canals. They were redug um later in the 19th century and then later on roads were sort of built around that so this entire city i'm in is thanks to you know uh their efforts and, and their irrigation efforts here in the american west so yeah i spend some time out here i love hiking uh, i don't go horseback riding uh, but I, I love hiking spending time out in the desert and i'll try to put in a surprise at the end uh, for something we saw on one of our recent hikes prompt two dry gulch what's the smallest town you've ever been to this was tough i want to say it's a small town called mcnary in Texas, but I've also been to places like Wikiup and Salome here in Arizona that are very, very small. When I was younger, Cortez Junction uh, between Phoenix and sort of on the road up towards Prescott or Flagstaff was also very small, but that's gradually grown. Uh, prompt three, uh, three, where the buffalo roam? Have you ever seen an American bison in person? Well, I have at Wing Cave National Park. Uh, we saw herds of them in the morning. And then we saw one at Badlands National Park right up next to the road. It was absolutely incredible. Just a majestic animal. Uh, there was a secondary prompt with that. What's the largest hoofed animal you've seen? Well, outside of the bison, I would add, I saw a moose in Rocky Mountain National Park last summer. And that was, that was incredible as well. Uh, finally, there was one about coyotes. I thankfully have avoided coyotes. I've heard them. I've heard them at night. Uh, not where I live, but when I, I've been out and about, I've heard them. But uh, never, thankfully, run into a pack of them. Prompt four, Old Doc Fry. What's your history with Westerns, uh, novels, TVs, movies? I have read a number <laughs> and then a number more. I haven't watched a lot of Western television. I think maybe Deadwood, uh, which was on almost 20 years ago on HBO. And then uh, I guess if you'd include season one of The Mandalorian, uh, I would say that was probably a Western. Those are probably the two Westerns I, I, I've watched most recently. Uh, in terms of Western films, there's a, a number that I absolutely love. Obviously, Tombstone. Uh, this prompt sh probably should have been I'm Your Huckleberry, but, you know, we'll forgive Steve for that. Uh, but Tombstone would be in there. Once Upon a Time in the West, the great Sergio Leone film with the great Ennio Morricone score. That's my favorite of his, though. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is very, very strong. Um, the Wild Bunch, great, great film. Uh, violent and horrifying in its violence, um, but also like the almost ballet of violence. Uh, and, and The Wild Bunch is... is uh, a, a very strong film, despite its violence. If we want something a little weirder, I would recommend The Shooting, directed by Monty Hellman. It has uh, Warren Oates, who's always great. He's in a bunch. He's, a, he's in the Wild Bunch. He's in a bunch of those uh, westerns. as sort of a bit player. Um, he's he's always great. Um, and then it has uh, an early Jack Nicholson role, as well. Uh, Heaven's Gate from Michael Cimino. It's a, it was a disaster of production, but it also reveals sort of the greed and avarice that was behind so much of the, the westward expansion here in the U.S. and who was being protected. Um, Unforgiven, sort of a nice revisionist western. Uh, I, I would put that up there with uh, Tombstone in terms of westerns from the 90s that I really have enjoyed. Uh, something older, maybe My Darling Clementine or uh, something else from Spaghetti Westerns, A Pistol for Ringo, Django. Uh, it'd be great. Uh, Sartana films. So th those would be some that I, I've enjoyed and I would recommend. Let's see. Uh, Diamond Lil at the Rialto Saloon. What's your relationship with alcohol? I don't drink. Um, my wife does and that's totally fine. And it's cool. Uh, we have a very nice wine refrigerator and, and, and uh, wine glasses and stuff, but I enjoy some cider. You know, soft cider, not hard cider. Uh, prompt six, the city slicker from back east. What's the best Western you've read? Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a list, frankly. Uh, I would have to include Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. I think this is an incredible book. It is 
a very horrifying book. It is nihilistic at times. Uh, it is a book, though, that really rips the, the, the uh, gloves off, rips the sunglasses off, rips the bandages off of everything that's, that's hiding around sort of the, the myths of the West and the Western. And this, it exposes it, it holds it up to the light um, in, in writing that is quite exquisite. Uh, and, and it parallels the horror of what's happening there. Uh, if you want something a little more traditional, uh, but yet not, I would include Bloody Season by Lauren Esselman. Lauren Esselman was a great Western writer as well. Uh, this book's first sentence is, he was dying slower than usual this morning. Um, and it's an impressionist book. It is a Western that is written as a series of impressions. The Each chapter is narrated from a different character's point of view. I do think it is superior to Epitaph by uh, Mary Doria Russell, which is an incredible, incredible retelling of sort of that whole tombstone mythology and the, the, the concept of celebrity, but Esselman's writing gets at something that, that's at the core of, of that, that story. Um, certainly Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco, uh, one of the great Native American stories, um, and in a book that does not conceal its passion, does not conceal um, its, its rage, and a book that is just absolutely, absolutely incredible. Uh, Larry McMurtry was a huge fan of it. Warlock by Oakley Hall is certainly the best in the Library of America's Western volume. A couple of books that are then, I include them as Westerns, even though they're not necessarily like set in the the, the, the American West, but uh, Pedro Paramo from Juan Rulfo. This is very weird, existential. Uh, it's a Western. Uh, the Adventures of China Iron by Gabriela Cabezon Camara. This is uh, set in Argentina on the Pampas, the Gauchos. This is a Western, and it's a revisionist Western, it's a feminist Western. It is absolutely incredible. Can't recommend this book highly enough. Um, the Australian Outback, The True History of the Kelly Gang by uh, Peter Carey. By far his best novel, in my opinion. So one that, again, that I would recommend. Uh, uh, two books that are then kind of in a hybrid state, Faces and Masks, the second volume from the Memory of Fire trilogy by Eduardo Galeano. This one has the 18th and 19th century. And so it has so much of, of what we think of within the West. It has South, Central, and North America. Um, and the, the way that this is a series of prose poems, um, fictional uh, retellings of history, anecdotes, quotes, uh, it's, it's all woven together kind of in the way that John Dos Passos did with the USA Trilogy. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and, and it reveals a lot of history that is sort of glossed over many times. Cadillac Ranch, uh, Cadillac Desert, not Cadillac Ranch, Cadillac Desert by Mark Reisner, all about how there's a massive drought ongoing across the second half of the 20th century in the American West and into now the 21st century and how there will be consequences for that. But this is a powerful and important book. And then finally, if you want another book set in the American West that's not a Western, you don't want to read Westerns, but you want to read something that's sort of set in, in that, that place, uh, Tony Hillerman's Navajo tribal police novels are the best. Um, Listening Woman or Dance Hall of the Dead is the second one. Listening Woman is the third one. Uh, I would recommend these. You don't really have to read The Blessing Way. The first one, it, they are later linked on, but that first one is not really essential. Um, and it's not as strong as the second and third books, but these are absolutely incredible. They are police procedurals set on the Navajo tribal lands in uh, the, the Southwestern U.S. Absolutely incredible. Uh, prompt seven, the man with the badge. Have you ever been in charge of other people? What's the most authority you've had? Would you be good at it? I don't really consider myself as having authority over students as a teacher or authority over my children as a parent. Uh, I am a department chair at my school. I've been a department chair for almost 10 years now. I think we're up to nine years as, as a department chair at three different schools. And for that, I do have to go in and do evaluations and give, you know, constructive criticism, direction, coaching on improvement plans. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm fairly good at that. I, I've, I've learned a lot. I've learned to pay attention. I've learned to listen. I've learned to, uh, you know, view our capabilities as adult learners the same way I view the capabilities of students as younger learners. So I, I'd like to think I, I work with others to get you know, build all of us up to be great instructors. Uh, prompt eight, the Tombstone Kid. I've been to Tombstone. Have you ever fired a gun? Yes. Been a gun aficionado? Absolutely not. Been shot? Thankfully, no. Uh, I've fired a rifle, shotgun, um, pistol, 
a bow, um, but I've never been a hunter. I'm not really interested in that. I spend a lot of time hiking. I don't really want to go hiking and also hunting. Um, that's just not something I'm interested in. Um, but I'm aware of how to like safely remove uh, the, the magazine from a gun or make sure that if I if were to encounter a gun, I know I have how to handle it safely. Um, and that's something that, you know, sadly is important. Uh, let's see, prompt nine, it ain't the bullet that gets you, it's the fall. How would you like to cash in your chips one night, 300 years from now without any clue that it's gonna come? So we'll see you then, booktube. So here we have a Gila monster.